University Challenge. Asking the questions, Amol Rajan. Hello and welcome to the quarter-final stage of this year's University Challenge. This round of the tournament is a double elimination round. All eight teams will play at least twice. If they win twice, they'll qualify for the semis, while if they lose twice, they'll be knocked out. If they win one match but lose the other, they'll need to play a third time to determine their fate. The team from Manchester are here tonight, having survived a tie-break in their first-round match against Trinity College Cambridge, which they won thanks to their captain's knowledge of feminist art. They had a much easier time of things against Edinburgh in round two, racing to a sizeable early lead, which they never let slip. So far, they've answered particularly well on physics, football and 80s hip-hop, but they've been a bit hit and miss on history, and their average score per game is precisely 200 points. Let's meet them for the third time. Hi, I'm Blue Modellus Reyes White. I'm from Franklin, Massachusetts, and I'm studying genetics. Hi, I'm Elia Kuhlman. I'm from London, and I study medicine. And their captain. Hi, I'm Harrison Hedera. I'm from Lecture's Garden City, and I'm studying a PhD materials. Hi, I'm Dan Grady. I'm from Burton on Trent, and I'm studying maths. The team from Birkbeck have also been through a tiebreak on their way to these quarterfinals in their second round match against the University of York, where a very brave buzz from Mr Macmillan on novels with the word I in their titles saw them over the line and into the last eight. Before that, they beat Oxford Brooks and across both those matches have been very impressive on film, politics, mathematics and most periods of literature, though the works of Thomas Middleton seem to have passed them by. Their average score per game is just over 190. Let's meet them again. Hi, I'm Danny McMillan. I'm originally from Belfast and I'm studying for a PhD in modern Irish history. Hello, I'm Olivia Mariner. I'm from London and I'm studying maths. And their captain. Hi, I'm Samir Chadder from Ealing in London and I'm studying creative and critical writing. Hi, I'm Margarita Huntley. I'm from South London and I'm studying for a Master's in Law and Political Economy. Right then, you clearly know the rules. Feeling ready? Yep. No. If you're not feeling ready, tough. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to do this anyway. Fingers on buzzers. Let's have your first starter for ten. I need the name of a composer here. Described as a visual tone poem and with a title taken from a Hopi word meaning life out of balance, the 1982 experimental documentary film Koyanis Katsi... Manchester Grady. Philip Glass. It is Philip Glass, yes. <laughs> your bonuses in Manchester. Three questions on potatoes in art. Quote... Why should the work of a potato planter be less interesting or less noble than any other activity? These words are attributed to which artist of the Barbizon school? His painting, The Angelus, depicts two farm workers praying over a basket of potatoes. The Barbizon yeah. school. Yeah, absolutely no clue. <laughs> don't even know a time period. Yeah, what's the time period? I don't know, 19th French. century? French or something? French. Um, once our artist, right? Yeah. All I can think of is the potato just by Van Gogh. <laughs> no, yeah, that's what I thought, but no. Van Gogh. No, it's Jean-Francois Millet. In the collections of Edinburgh University, Bagged Potatoes is a work in oils by which Scottish artist, born in 1921. She's otherwise noted for her paintings of Glasgow street scenes, particularly of children. Oh, my God. Mm. I know this. I've got nothing, so if you do know it... If you do know it, just give me your gut. No. Nothing's coming. Uh, Scottish name. <laughs> No. Uh, uh, Cecilia Brown. I don't know. No, it's Joan Erdley. Finally, depicting a family of five around a table in a dimly lit room, <laughs> The Potato Eaters is a major work of 1885 by which artist born in 1853? I believe it's Van Gogh. It is Van Gogh. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll start the question now. What six-letter word can mean all of the following? In biology and medicine, free from disease, malformation, experimental therapy or manipulation, in chemistry, a solution containing the gram equivalent weight of the solute in each litre, and in mathematics, a line or plane perpendicular to another. Birkbeck cheddar. Normal. Normal is correct. <laughs> Your bonuses then, Birkbeck, are on the seven sister states of northeast India, which comprise Assam and six neighbouring states. In each case, name the state from the description. First, a little larger than Scotland, this sparsely populated state is the largest of the seven sisters and has its capital at Itanaga. Formerly known as the Northeast Frontier Agency, it shares a long border with China. Ooh. Himtal Pradesh, does that border China? I don't know. I don't think that's I the don't, I don't think that's no. what that is, but no. I, I'm no, not really sure, to be honest. Himachal Pradesh. 
There is Arunachal Pradesh. Yeah. Named after a tribal grouping and the hills they inhabit, this state is a little smaller than Wales and has its capital at Kohima. It's Nagaland, isn't it? I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Nagaland. Correct. Situated between Nagaland and Mizoram, this state shares its name with a river that flows into nearby Myanmar. The capital of this state is Imphal. Rivers. Rivers. You got rivers? Not obviously. No, I'm just going to pass. Just, yeah, pass. Manipur. Oh. Let's start the question now. What short name links all of these? The King of Scotland, who inherited the throne on the death of Malcolm Canmore in 1097. The Anglo-Saxon prince proposed as king after the Battle of Hastings and known as the Atheling. Manchester grading. Edgar. Edgar is correct, yes. Your bonus is Manchester. Three questions on the Ashanti people of West Africa. The Ashanti Empire was founded in the 1670s with its capital at Kumasi, in which present-day West African country? Ghana. OK. Ghana. Yeah. yeah. Ghana? Ghana is correct. What artefact is said to house the spirit of all Ashanti people, past and present? It gives its name to a war of 1900, after which it was hidden until 1921 to prevent it being captured. I need a precise two-word name. It wants um, Golden Stool. OK. Golden Stool? Golden Stool is correct. Nice. The Baole people are descendants of the same lineage as the Ashanti and are indigenous to which country? Somewhere near Ghana. Yeah, the country is yeah. Ghana. Cote d'Ivoire, Ivory Coast, Tango, yeah, back in the facility. Cote d'Ivoire? It is Cote d'Ivoire or Ivory Coast. <laughs> right, now let's start the question now. Which British artist created the 2018 statue of Millicent Fawcett that was the first statue depicting a woman standing in Parliament Square? She won the 1997 Turner Prize for her piece entitled 60 Minute Silence. Ah. Uh, Beck Huntley. Gillian Waring? Is correct, yes. <laughs> Your bonus is then, Beck. Three questions on infrared spectroscopy. In order for a vibrational mode to be IR active and therefore give a peak in infrared spectroscopy, which moment within the molecule must fluctuate during this mode? Moment. Dipole moment. Just yeah, dipole in my head, but what else do we have? What else do we have? Yeah, you'll try it. Dipole. Correct. The region between 1500 to 500 centimetres to the power minus one on an IR spectrum is given what name? This region often contains a large number of infrared bands. I don't know. Yeah, I've not got anything for that. Um, radio? I'm actually radio. No, it's not radio. No, I'll just say pass. It's the fingerprint region. Uh, a broad trough in an IR spectrum between 2,500 and 3,300 centimetres to the power minus one signifies which functional group? Functional group, so something like carboxyl or what else have we got? I can try um, carboxyl. I can't think of anything else. You need... I'll try, yeah, I'll try carboxyl. Yeah. Carboxyl? It's hydroxyl. Ah. It. Let's have a picture starter then. For your picture round, you're going to see a periodic table with most of the chemical symbols removed. For 10 points, I'll need you to tell me what links the etymologies of the elements whose places are indicated with red stars. Uh, Birkbeck Macmillan. Gemstones? No. Manchester de los Reyes White. Are they named after valleys? No. I needed rocks or minerals. Bad luck, Birkbeck. Gemstones was too specific. I was referring to beryllium, calcium and silicon. Calcium's name refers to lime, which isn't a gemstone. Right, now the start of the question now. In which country are the headquarters of CONMEBOL, that is, the governing body of South American football? Its national team has won the Copa America twice in 1953 and 1979, and its best performance in a World Cup was in 2010, when the team reached the quarterfinals. Its all-time leading goal scorer is Roque Santa Cruz. Manchester Coolman. Paraguay. Paraguay is correct. <laughs> a moment ago, you saw four elements named after rocks or minerals. Uh, your picture bonuses, Manchester, are three more sets of elements whose names have similar derivations. Firstly, I need the precise two-word category that links the derivations of these and only these element names. Um, so, is this university, isn't it? And an axonite. Like Berkeley. Berkelium. Berkelium. Can this be university? No, no, hold on, hold on. But let's just work out what the elements are first. Um, that's not axonide. Um, what's after euterbium? Um, is that what that is? It could be. Swedish, so it could be the Swedish is, towns. Is that what that is? Euterbium is a Swedish town. Are four yeah. named after that same town? Yes, I think there'd be more. It's not just two. Yeah. Is it one European towns? No, no, because no, I know there's two named after, like, the same city in Sweden. Oh, Swedish guys. Towns. Uh, Swedish towns? No, it's dwarf planets. Oh, OK. Second, what country links the names of the elements indicated by the red stars here? Uh, what is What's that? The oh, in, uh, uh, oh, what's the... Maybe the US? Maybe there could be Americium, like Bikelium, Californium. No, 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 that's way too high. Um, OK. Oh, this should be Sweden? Should this be Sweden? No, no, no. there's only no, this. Poland? Uh, Better hurry, you guys, sorry. Uh, um, uh, 
Pa pass. The answer is Sweden. Oh. Finally, these elements all have names that derive from what? Uh, fluorine. Fluorine. Uh, fluorine into iodine or bromine? Uh, that's bromine. 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 The chloride, br bromine. What are they? What are they all? Um, what colours is it? Three colours. Uh, is that? Yeah, maybe. Uh, Humours or. Um, oh, guys, need an answer. Colours. Colours is correct. Oh, nice. nice. Yeah. Another start of the question now. Named after the 19th century Swiss mathematician who developed an empirical formula for their wavelengths, which series of spectral lines of hydrogen results from electron transitions from higher levels to the N equals 2 energy level? Manchester Senehedira. Barmer? It is the Barmer series, yes. <laughs> Your bonuses in Manchester are three questions on languages of Taiwan. First, the Amis and Atayal are indigenous peoples who speak languages of what family? This widespread family is thought to have originated in Taiwan. I need a Greco-Latin derived word. Um, mm. Greco, Japonic. No, 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 it's not Japonic. Um, it must be Greco-Latin, um, Austroasiatic. It's not Greco-Latin. I don't. What does that even mean? Well, it's obvious. Come on, guys. Austroasiatic. Austro no, it's Austronesian. Austronesian. About 10% of the population of Taiwan speak what variety of Chinese, whose name means guest people? Thought to have originated in North China, this group numbers about 80 million in China and worldwide. Manchurians in North China? Or... Yeah, Manchur no, Manchuria is oh. in North China, so Manchu. Yeah. Manchu? No, it's Hakka or Kejia. Often referred to as Taiwanese, Hokkien, also known as Minnan, originated in which Chinese province to the west of the Taiwan Strait? What's on that coast? Uh... Originating which Taiwanese province? Yeah, to the west of Taiwan, to where Taiwan is, the mainland. Yeah, I yeah. don't know where it is. I have no idea. Okay, let's have an answer. Champa Kingdom. No, it's <laughs> Fujian. Now, let's start the question. With examples including early Greek writings and some Etruscan texts, what term denotes a style of writing whereby alternate lines are read left to right, then right to left, with the letters reversed? It comes from the Greek for as the ox turns. Anyone? No, I'll tell you. The answer is Bustrofeden. Let's start the question. Which city in China's Shandong province was the site of the only land battle of the First World War to be fought in East Asia when Anglo-Japanese forces captured the German treaty port in late 1914? The city in question gives its name to a leading beer brand marketed... <laughs> Berk, 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 Xing Shao. Can you spell that? Yes, yeah, so T-S-I-N-G-T-A-O, the anglicised one. Yes, that's one possible Romanized version of it. I was looking for Qingdao. <laughs> Your bonuses are character names that occur more than once in the works of Shakespeare. In each case, give the character name from the description. Romeo's servant in Romeo and Juliet, a singer in Much Ado About Nothing, a merchant in A Comedy of Errors, and Portia's servant in The Merchant of Venice. Who's Romeo's servant? Mercutio. Mercutio, Tybalt, all these people that I don't know which one. It would be Tybalt. We'll try Mercutio. We'll try it, yeah. Mercutio? Mercutio? No, it's Balthazar. Ah. Yeah. Orsino's attendant in Twelfth Night and one of the titular two gentlemen of Verona. The latter falls in love with Sylvia, becomes exiled and leads a band of robbers. Is that Malvolio? No. 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 Um, I didn't do that oh, one. Wait. I didn't do that one. It might be... Feste? Feste? No, it's, it's not. No, I don't think it is. Let's try Malvolio. Yeah. OK. Uh, Malvolio? <laughs> No. He'd be very offended at being <laughs> described as Orsino's attendant. Goodness me, he'd be revenged upon the whole pack of you. No, that's Valentine. Ah. Finally, the younger sister of Catherine and eventual wife of Lucencio in The Taming of the Shrew and Michael Cassio's mistress in Othello. God, I've got no idea. No, no, no. sorry. No. Um, just pass. No, pass. pass. Bianca, let's do another start of the question. The anthropological works From Ritual to Romance by Jesse L. Weston and The Golden Bower by James Fraser are both named in the author's notes accompanying which major literary work first published in its entirety in 1922? Bang, bang, cheddar. The Wasteland? It is The Wasteland from 1922, yes. <laughs> T.S. Eliot, of course. Three questions for you on a sociologist. Which Canadian-born sociologist is credited with developing the dramaturgical theory of human interaction in his 1959 book, The Presentation of Self in Everyday Life? Ooh. I know the theory. It's when you've got the eye and you've got the performing eye. Yeah. And I don't know what that guy's name is. I don't know. It's not Carl Rogers or something. I'll try Carl Rogers. I don't think it is. But... It's worth a try. Carl Rogers? It's Irving Goffman. What term was coined by Goffman for institutions such as prisons and mental hospitals in which people are bureaucratically processed, cut off from outside influence, and their behaviour is regulated, regimented and monitored? 
Um, it's not limitless. He's the one who did games people play. Is yeah. it like something about... Oh, he talks about transactional analysis, but it's not that. It's not that. that. It's, it's industrial like, complex. Like, well, it could be yeah. something like industrial, industrial complex. complex. Yeah, industrial, yeah. industrial, yeah. Complex. Yeah. industrial yeah. complex. No, it's a total institution. Uh, Which 1964 work by Goffman examines the reaction of society to individuals with characteristics that deviate from the perceived norm? Is that what you just said? Games I don't people think play. it is games no, people play, it's not but like I don't have or something else. Is it? Sorry? It's not like freaks. It's not trying to something trying to scandalous. I don't know whether there's a 12 to I'm say. I'm going to try it. Freaks. No, it's stigma. Oh. <laughs> Let's have a music round now. For your music starter, you're going to hear a piece of popular music. For 10 points, simply name the group performing. Bank, Bank, Macmillan. Air. No. no. Manchester Grady. Craftwork. It is Craftwork, yes. Oh, nice. That was Autobahn by Craftwork, recorded and engineered in the studio of producer Connie Plank, who helped shape the sound of several influential groups of the so-called kraut rock scene, as well as the new wave bands that followed them. For your bonuses, three more pieces produced by Plank. In each case, I want the name of the group for five points. Firstly, this German group, of which Planck was said to be the unofficial third member. Can? No, it's Neuer. Secondly, this other German group, with which Planck worked extensively. Can. This is probably Can. <laughs> would be my only other guess. <laughs> I'm trying to think of Crap Rock, I can't remember a single one. I've only got Cam. <laughs> Is this Cam? No, it's Cluster. <laughs> and finally, this British group. What oh, Art of Noise or like early Human League stuff. Oh, it it's not like. League. Oh, no, it's Ultra Rocks. Yes, it is. Yeah, Ultravox, Vienna, Ultravox. Ultravox. Ultravox is correct. Now, to start the question. Often imperfectly translated as happiness or welfare, what Greek word did Aristotle use for the highest who... Bank, 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 Millen. Eudaimonia. It is eudaimonia, yes. <laughs> You're doing myself, then. <laughs> Your bonuses are on Bossa Nova. Okay. Which Brazilian singer was known as the voice of Bossa Nova? She shot to stardom with the 1963 recording of the song The Girl from Ipanema from an album recorded with the saxophonist Stan Getz and her husband, Jao. Uh, well, Gilberto. Is that yeah, sorry, it's his surname, Gilberto. Gilberto. Yeah, Gilberto. Gilberto. Gilberto? Yes, it's Astrid Gilberto. Next, the music for The Girl from Ipanema was written by which Brazilian musician, composer and pioneer of Bossa Nova? Does anyone know any Bossa Nova history? I think the only one I had in my head was Joe Barto. What about um, who else Tom Jobim? Tom Jobim? I don't think he's really Bossa Nova, but... That's uh, worth a go. Can I nominate you? Yeah. Cool. Nominate Huntley? Tom Jobim? It's correct. Well, nice. Jobim, along with Louise Bonfa, contributed to the soundtrack to which 1959 film that won the Palme d'Or? The Bonfa composition Mania de Carnaval from its soundtrack contributed to the early global popularity of Bossa Nova. Ooh. I feel um, like I've heard someone um, say this to me. The only thing I'm thinking of is that film called Chico and Rita, but that's years later, and it's not a good example. Any other Brazilian films? Might not be Brazilian. It might have just been set there. Yeah, it could just be. It's not Brazilian. Just say it. Yeah. No, I don't. Can I say? Can I let you nominate? Can I nominate you? Come on. Yeah. Nominate Huntley. It's Chico and Rita. It's not that. But no, it's Black Orpheus. Now let's start the question now. Sometimes referred to as amber, opal, or ochre. What collective term is given to the nucleotide triplet sequences on mRNA strands that are recognised by the ribosome and result in termination of protein translation? Bank, 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 Millen. Telomere? No. Manchester de los Reyes White. Stop codon. Stop codon is correct, yes. <laughs> Your bonus is Manchester. Three questions on the wildlife of Trinidad and Tobago. First, bright red in colour and with a long, thin bill, which mangrove-dwelling wading bird appears on the coat of arms of Trinidad and Tobago? Flamingo. Flamingo, a bit bright red bill. Oh, bright red bill. I don't know um, what I'm talking about. Here. Mangrove dwelling. Yeah. I have no idea. Is it, is it going to be like an ibis of some sort? Well, like a toucan. Yeah, but toucans are. Uh, it's not mangrove. Uh, ibis? Yes, specifically a scarlet ibis. Secondly, known locally as the quenk, 
What pig-like animal of the family Teus suidae is found throughout Central and South America? Peccary. Peccary, I reckon. I yeah, because pig-like is not... Yeah. Yeah. Peccary? Correct. Found in Trinidad's rainforest hills, what is the common name of Leopardus pardalis, a nocturnal, solitary and territorial wildcat of medium size with markings similar to a leopard or jaguar? Clouded leopard? Go for it. Yeah? Clouded leopard? A cloud leopard's a different species in a different part of the world. That was the ocelot. Oh, yeah. Now, let's start the question. What three letters begin words with these meanings? An electric charge accumulated in response to mechanical pressure, a black and white coloration in animals, an artistic depiction of the Virgin Mary with the body of the dead Jesus, ah. and... Burke, 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 Millen. P I E. P I E is correct, yes. <laughs> Your bonus is, Burke, Burke, a question on power series in mathematics. Born in 1698, which Scottish mathematician gives his name to the Taylor series of a function expanded about the reference point zero, whose terms consist of the variable x raised to non-negative integer powers? So, Mc McLaurin. 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 Yeah, I think that sounds, that sounds okay. good to me. Yeah. McLaurin. Correct. Similar to a Maclaurin series, what series is named after a 19th century French mathematician denotes the generalised Taylor series, whose terms consist of the variable x raised to integer powers of either sign? Ooh, it's like alternating French mathematicians. 19th century, 19th century French mathematician. Like a Galois series. It's not a Galois series. Um, who else was there? It's not Laplace, is it? Oh, it could be Laplace, Laplace. series. Yeah. Yeah. Laplace? Laplace? No, it's Laurent. Uh, In the 1890s, which French-born mathematician developed a method of approximating a function by writing it as the ratio of two distinct power series? Stop L'Hopital. Oui? L'Hopital's rule. No, um, that's, that's when you differentiate. What's this meaning? That's not that. No, that's French. French. Try, try L'Hopital, but I think... Mm. Yeah. Who? What were you going to say? L'Hopital. L'Hopital? Yeah. L'Hopital? No, it's Henri Padet. Okay. No. Let's have a picture starter then. For your picture round, you're going to see a painting for 10 points. Please name the artist. Manchester Senehedira. Paul Nash. It is Paul Nash. <laughs> that was the mule track by Paul Nash, who is one of the many artists commissioned as an official war artist by the British government during the First World War. For your bonuses, Manchester, you'll see works by three further war artists. In each case, simply name the artist. Firstly... Uh, are these meant to be British? I think so. I was hoping you were listening. Um, <laughs> I've no idea. Um, Otto Dix. No, it was Percy Wyndham Lewis. Secondly, this artist, one of the first women commissioned. I have absolutely no I've idea. I've got no idea. I've got nothing. No. Nothing. Just... Yeah. <sighs> Pass. Anna Airy. Finally, this artist, who was an official war artist during the Second World War. Again. No <laughs> clue. No clue. No clue. <laughs> Just the first guy. Second World War artist. Yeah, I've no idea. Nothing. Nothing. No, nothing. Sorry. It's uh, Stanley Spencer. Another side of the question: A central tenet of Jainism that is also prominent in Hinduism and Buddhism. What ethical principle means non? <laughs> Manchester Senehedira. Ahimsa. Ahimsa is correct. Yes. <laughs> Your bonuses, of Manchester, are on treaties of London. In each case, please give the decade that saw the signing of the treaty described. First, the two treaties of London signed a year apart that resulted in a temporary truce after the Battle of Poitiers during the Edwardian phase of the Hundred Years' War. I thought you were going to say something, but um, Edwardian phase of the Hundred Years' War, so it will be 13-something. Yeah, just go with that. 1340s? 1340s? 1350s. Oh, yeah. Secondly, the Treaty of London that guaranteed the independence and neutrality of Belgium soon after it became independent? It became... I, it could be. Oh, I don't know. Uh, it's Belgium. Yeah. yeah. Go for it. Yeah. Go for it. 1870s? No, it's the 1830s. Finally, the Treaty of London that tried to prevent further hostilities in the Balkans. This effort proved unsuccessful after Bulgaria attacked its former allies, Greece and Serbia. Is that... Century, That's 19, end of 19th century, I would assume. Yeah, early 1920s. Yeah, early. Oh, actually, yeah. 1820s. 1820s? No, it's in the 1910s. Another start of the question. I need a first name and surname here. What name is shared by a bland 40-year-old bookkeeper in Nathaniel West's 1939 novel, The Day of the Locust, and the patriarch of a family in an animated sitcom first broadcast in 1989? Manchester Grady. Homer Simpson. It is Homer Simpson, right. yes. Your well, three bonuses in Manchester are questions on the visual arts. From the Greek for to transform, what name is given to the perspective technique in art that gives either a distorted or normal image of a subject, depending on one's viewpoint? It's going to be like metamorphous, metamorphic <laughs> something. Yeah. Is that Greek? I'm pretty sure it's Greek, yeah. Uh, metamorphic? No, it's anamorphosis. 
Which Swiss artist has created a number of 21st century anamorphic installations, including three ellipses for three locks in Cardiff and across the buildings at King's Cross in London? Swiss artist. Uh, Christo, no is he Swiss? It's something. It's something. something. Yeah. Christo? No, it's Felice Varini. Finally, Jean de Danteville and Georges de Selve appear in which 1533 painting by Hans Holbein the Younger, whose depiction of a skull in the foreground is a well-known example of anamorphosis? The Ambassadors, right? Yeah, the, ambassadors. the Ambassadors. It is the Ambassadors, yes. Two minutes to go, to get plenty of time, Bert Beck. Alkali metals such as cesium and rubidium form one end, and noble metals like gold and platinum form the other end, of which series that ranks metals by how easily they form... Uh, Bert Beck Chatter. Reactivity. Correct. Your bonuses are on star formation. Which British physicist gives his name to the critical length and mass scales that determine whether or not a molecular cloud can collapse to form a star? He's also known for his work on the classical formulation of black body radiation. Ooh, it's not albedo, is it? I don't know. Can say something? I don't know. Hawking, no, no, not no, no, Hawking, that's right. Albedo? No, it's genes. Along with Hermann von Helmholtz, which British physicist names the mechanism of gravitational contraction that heats young stars before they can sustain nuclear fusion? He's better known for his work in thermodynamics. Oh, is it going to be Boltzmann? No, not no, Boltzmann, it's sorry. Right. Maxwell? Maxwell. Maxwell. Yeah. Maxwell. <laughs> Maxwell. Kelvin. Which British um, astronomer derived a limit for the maximum luminosity of a star where the radiation pressure from the star equals the gravitational force exerted by it? He's also known for an experiment that confirmed the predictions of general relativity. It's not oh. Hawking. Is that Hawking? Mm. It's earlier than that. It's earlier than oh, that, sorry. but I don't know his name. Um, it's gone. No. Okay, okay, pass. It's Arthur Eddington. Another starter question. In geology, what single word term denotes the process by which a lithospheric plate is consumed at a convergent plate? <laughs> Manchester Senehedira. Subduction? It is subduction, yes. <laughs> Your bonuses then are on stage representations of the mythological figure Phaedra. An early stage version of the Phaedra story, Hippolytus is a play by which ancient Greek playwright? Suppose it could be Euripides, Sophocles, Aeschylus. Yeah. Um, one of those. Pick one. Pick one. Yeah. <laughs> Come on. Uh, Euri 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 Euripides. Correct. First performed in 1677, Phaedra is a tragedy by which French playwright? Molière. Molière? Yeah, Molière. Yes, no, Racine. Finally, which British playwright wrote the 1996 play Phaedra's Love? Tom Stoppard, maybe? I don't oh, know. It might be Stoppard. But that's Tom Stoppard? No, it's Sarah Kane. Let's start the question. For 14 years, Sayaka Stevens was the president of which West African country? Noted for diamond production, it became independent in 1961. And I... Manchester Grady. Sierra Leone? It is Sierra Leone, yes. <laughs> Three bonuses on the 18th century author and abolitionist Olauda Equiano. After being bought by a Royal Navy officer at a young age, Equiano was named after Gustav, the Swedish king who founded what dynasty in 1523? 15. And at the moment, Birkbeck College have 95 and Manchester have 160. The answer to that last one was Vassa. Very decent of you to applaud, guys. I mean, they were really good. They were much better. Yeah. They, were right. <laughs> they were much better is one way of putting it. <laughs> <laughs> and as you know, this isn't goodbye because you just need to win your next match in order to stay in the competition. Manchester. I thought you were going to make it really stressful again. <laughs> <laughs> I'm stressed. Because you yeah, do I'm like stressed. those high-stress endings, but in the end, you just pulled away and um, showed an amazing range of knowledge. If you win again next time, you're going to qualify for the semi-finals. I hope you can join us next time for another quarter-final match. But until then, it's goodbye from Birkbeck. Bye. Bye. It's goodbye from Manchester. Bye. Bye. And it's goodbye from me. Goodbye. <laughs>